Welcome back to Crucial Tech. And today we're back with an old friend, Alan Grau uh, from Sectigo. And we're talking about quantum computing today. Uh, let, let me give you a, a basic background on quantum computing. It is uh, something a lot of big companies are talking about. Google, IBM, uh, the Chinese, the Russians, they're all working on developing a quantum computer, which is a little bit more than just bits uh, uh, or ones and zeros. You've heard about that term for digital, that, that it's, it's all ones and zeros. Quantum is a little bit more involved because there are more options in, involved and it can deal with a lot more data a lot faster than our computers that we have today. But they're all in a development area. And Sectigo is going to be coming out with an announcement uh, uh, Pretty, you know, probably after or or before that this uh, podcast get uh, gets out there. Definitely before, uh, where they're they're going to be addressing the problem of uh, the quantum computing apocalypse. So, Alan, thanks for joining us today, and tell us what is the quantum apocalypse. Hi, Lou, and yeah, thanks for having me on. So the quantum apocalypse is the point in time when quantum computers reach a, a stage in development where they're, they're fast enough to be able to essentially break some of our current encryption algorithms. The, the two that are most susceptible are the RSA and the ECC encryption algorithms, the, you know, the public key encryption algorithms that underpin really all of the PKI systems, any certificate-based communication uh, that, is, that are used on really a large set of, of security issues. Everything from you know, securing web transactions, connecting to websites securely, um, passport-based systems, all sorts of authentication systems used in enterprise use cases, uh, email encryption using SMIME, uh, IOT security relies heavily on certificates for authentication. So it's, it's one of those underlying technologies that's used extremely broadly. And quantum computing will at some point in time be able to easily break those encryption algorithms and really render that layer of, um, of security obsolete. Okay, so it sounds like on, on a, a basic use level, we're talking about, oh, nation states using this against other nation states uh, and eventually drifting down to the way area of cyber criminals. Yeah, absolutely. So just to expand a little bit on the problem, um, you know, when you use a PKI system, when you use a digital certificate, Typically, you've got an either that's using either RSA encryption or ECC encryption, and you know RSA encryption is currently extremely secure because you know, they're to be able to break uh, the encryption algorithm using a brute force attack takes you know lifetimes. Um, and with quantum computing, quantum computers are very good at solving certain problems. Other problems they aren't as good at solving. One of the problems they're very, very good at solving is factoring prime numbers, which is the kind of the underlying thing that makes RSA encryption so very secure. So quantum computing will be able to break, you know, um, be able to do a brute force attack on RSA encryption in a matter of, well, depending on how advanced the quantum computer is, um, you know, in a matter of months or less. So, um, so they're, they're still, you know, require you know, significant resources. So as you say, when the first, you know, people to have access to quantum computers that are capable of, of breaking these encryption algorithms will be large, well-funded players, you know, rogue nation states um, or, or other, you know, very, very well-funded organizations. Um, and, but over time, like any technology, they will become more widely accept, accessible and, um, you know, will become more mainstream. Well, is it possible that we'll create algorithms, security algorithms that even a quantum computer can't break? Yeah, so, so quantum computers, um, again, there are certain mathematical problems that they're very good at, at handling, but there are others that, that they don't provide a significant or 
an enormous uh, increase in speed in solving. So what's going on is NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technologies, has started an effort, uh, and I believe it started in 2016, to create new encryption algorithms that are, are still algorithms that can be performed on a traditional computer, but that are not easily broken by quantum computers. So they're using new mathematical techniques to do encryption. And, and those algorithms, um, you know, that process is well underway. So we're actually in the second round of the, the NIST process. Uh, they've started with a large set of candidate algorithms that looked promising and they've refined that and narrowed that down and have announced, um, you know, kind of a second set of, of standard, standard algorithms uh, candidate algorithms, not standardized yet, but that are candidates for standardization and are working towards that. And there are implementations available today of those algorithms. And there's a lot of effort has gone into, you know, the mathematics and the analysis of those algorithms to determine, you know, whether they truly will be resistant to quantum computer attacks. Okay, so let's talk about how the immediacy of this problem. Uh, now, I, before we started out here, I decided to do uh, a lookup on uh, the hype around quantum computing. And uh, it, there was, I, I've read a lot about this over the past few, a few months. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gartner actually came out with their hype cycle uh, in 2019, where they placed the hype for quantum computing at just below the peak of inflated expe expectations. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but it's actually about 10 years away from reaching that peak. Uh, so uh, that brings me to the question here is, how soon will we realistically see anyone come forth with a functional quantum computing technology, considering how overblown all of the announcements have been so far? Yeah, no, there's no question that like most, if not all new technologies, right, there's a lot of hype um, around this technology. And it's, you know, there are large companies and governments that are, are spending a lot of money to develop quantum computers. You know, experts are saying, you know, that the first quantum computers capable of breaking RSA and ECC encryption, you know, could emerge as soon as 2026, um, but expect for sure by, you know, about 2031. So, you know, five to 10 years from now, roughly, um, you know, obviously, hopefully the, you know, Google and IBM and, and the first developers of quantum computers will have better things to do than to try to break, you know, people's secrets, um, you know, with those computers. But, you know, we're looking at, you know, f possibly as soon as five years, you know, maybe more like a decade before the quantum computers are, have reached that point. And then obviously, you know, the, it'll take, you know, time before there are large numbers of quantum computers that are available. Um, and on and one hand, you can say, oh, well, five to 10 years, I've got plenty of time to, to deal with this problem. But if you really break down how, what it's going to take to address this, we don't have, we can't wait, you know, till five years from now to, to begin addressing the problem. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, there's a question of how long we need to keep data secret for. So if you're producing data today that someone's able to take and record that data and it's a secret that you need to keep for 20 years, well, there's a, a concern that, that that data could within that time frame, be broken. You know, so for, you know, if somebody's recording my, you know, bank transactions, when I log on you know, to, to a website to, uh, you know, to do my personal banking, if someone records that, well, by the time they're able to develop a quantum computer that can break that, it's not such a big deal if that information has been, um, you know, is stolen, right? By then, hopefully I've changed my password and, and that information will be relatively obsolete. Uh, but if you've, if you've got, you know, national secrets or other information that you need to keep secret for a very long period of time, you know, that's already, we've already reached the window where there's a concern that that data could be recorded and broken at some point in the future. So that's one aspect of, of the reason there's some urgency around this problem. There, there's a, two other aspects to the, the reason that there's some urgency. One is the number of systems and solutions that are using traditional encryption algorithms that need to be updated is, is vast. I, where every you know, website 
you know, every web server that's um, using certificates for authentication will need to have the algorithms updated. Um, you know, every device that accesses those will need to be updated. Every IoT device that's using a certificate to connect to you know, a website, um, national passport systems use certificates, ID cards, ID badges, um, credit card transactions, there's all sorts of, of systems that are using RSA and ECC encryption that will need to be updated. So the time it's gonna take to update those systems, you know, it has to be measured in years. It's gonna take years and years to update, you know, the PKI infrastructure, you know, things like that, you know, we at Sectigo are providing some of those capabilities. Other companies are providing that, so that all needs to be updated, both hardware and software systems. And then the third piece that creates some urgency is people that are building devices, you know, on the IoT side. Most of, of what I'm doing at Sectigo is focused on the IoT side of the house. And those devices, you know, we're building encryption into them, shipping them out into the field. And those devices are still gonna be operating in, in some cases 20 or 30 years from now. And so devices that are being built today, we need to have a path to be able to upgrade them to new encryption over time. So, you know, it, it's, it, there, there's three different, you know, kind of pieces to why, uh, while it's gonna take five, 10 years to get to a point where quantum computers can break these encryption algorithms. It's gonna take us you know, five to 10 years, if not more in some cases, to update all of our systems to, to move away from traditional encryption algorithms. So starting today, what can organizations and IT professionals do to protect themselves for this quantum apocalypse? So a lot, what it, most of the conversations that we're having to pe with people today that are looking at implementing a PKI system, you know, they recognize that there aren't fully productized solutions available yet, um, but they're, they're looking at a roadmap, right? So as they select partners, as they select vendors, they are wanting to, they need to make sure that they're selecting someone who's has a product roadmap that's working towards being able to support those solutions. You know, when a, if a company gets locked, selects a PKI vendor, those typically are, you know, long-term agreements. They put a lot of resource into, you know, utilizing that specific vendor and it's not always easy to switch. So you want to make sure that you're, you're selecting vendors that, you know, have a roadmap that are going to be able to support quantum safe encryption algorithms as they're standardized and as they're rolled out. And then the other piece of it is just start educating yourself, start understanding what the problems are, start looking at what a migration path would be, you know, start putting a roadmap in place on their internal development systems to move to quantum safe encryption. And, and again, a lot of that, if they're building, you know, if you're building a new, say a laptop or a web browser, um, you know, those are products where you're gonna be doing new releases fairly frequently. You know, if you're building a laptop today, chances are in four or five years, it's not gonna be used. So it's not something that you necessarily have to have a solution in place for today. But if you're building a connected car or if you're building equipment that's going into, you know, the power grid that's gonna be in place for 20 years, you know, you need to start thinking pretty quickly about how you migrate those to quantum safe encryption as they come up, come out. So, you know, under, you know, choosing, choosing partners is important, you know, educating yourself and, and having a roadmap of when, you know, large organizations need to move their systems to quantum safe crypto and how they're going to do that is, is really critical. Okay. The crucial tech is, is mostly dedicated to the common schmo uh, <laughs> that has no idea what's going on in this world when it comes to security and I'm trying to educate them. So, for those common schmoes, what should they be looking out for as far as protecting themselves? Yeah, that's a, a really interesting problem. And it's, it is a challenge because as a common user of technology, you know, those users are all very reliant upon their vendors, right? They're reliant upon the systems they're using. And we've seen this with, um, you know, in recent times with, you know, Zoom conferencing, right? people expecting it to have high levels of security and then finding out there were some weaknesses and, and then Zoom, you know, to their credit, has done a great job of addressing some of the concerns. Uh, and I think a lot of that came because there was awareness. There were consumers that were saying, hey, we need products that are secure and what, you know, what you've promised isn't living up to it. Um, you know, so I think, a, a, you know, this is one of those, those areas where, you know, the common consumer 
you know, because they can speak their voice, they can ask questions, they can be aware of the issues, um, you know, and make sure that, you know, as they move forward, that they're choosing vendors that have a strong security stance, that it, you know, that are investing in security. Um, it's not really something that they can actually implement themselves, uh, but they can vote with their, you know, with their voice and with their dollars. So are we going to be looking forward to a campaign for the Sectigo Inside product? <laughs> I, you know, branding uh, is, a, is a great question. I, I'm a little more focused on the technology side. So uh, we, we've got some, some things that we're doing that we think are, uh, you know, really promoting our, our, our solutions and uh, not exactly that wording, but yeah, we're, we do have some great announcements coming up and really, you know, as a, as a company, Sectigo is very focused on, you know, obviously supporting our customers today, but it, to, on being a technology leader and making sure that we're looking forward and, you know, we see a quantum, quantum safe certificates, quantum safe crypto as a critical problem and one that we're, we're very focused on being a market leader and providing solutions that uh, the customers will be able to utilize. Okay, Alan, thank you very much. As, nor as usual, you are a font of information. Uh, <laughs> this has been Lou Covey with Alan Grau. This is Crucial Tech, a Footwasher Media production.